Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you my upgraded stun baton. If you're interested in building this yourself, there's a list of parts, tools, and materials in the description of this video. Please keep in mind that this is for entertainment purposes only. If you rely on the information portrayed in this video, you assume the responsibility for the results. Have fun, but take proper safety precautions, and remember that every project you try is at your own risk. First, I'll show you a quick firing test and also go over a couple of the key features of this design. Here you can see that it's currently charging. And on the bottom, there is your master switch. Then to activate the stun gun portion, you first need to turn it on by sliding that little switch forward. And then I switched it from a red LED to a blue one just because I think it looks nicer. Press this button here to activate the stun and there are three windows, including, I guess, four, if you consider the front being like a giant cattle prod. It's pretty intimidating, but it's not that different from the original design of the stun gun flashlight. So first, I'll just show you the regular stun gun. And it will stun on all three windows, so that's really nice if you're being attacked. You don't have to necessarily use one side of it. And then at the front, you have the cattle prod portion. It's a nice surface. It's kind of sparking on this. Very intimidating, and I'm really impressed with the final result of this design. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the original and modified version of the stun baton. Both are made out of a very strong and durable aluminum alloy, and it has the same circuitry, so they advertise it's going to be outputting 9 million volts, which is pretty hard to believe that they would sell something that powerful commercially available. It's definitely not impossible. I did shock myself with this thing by mistake, and it hurts like hell. So I guess I could say that 9 million volts would be accurate, but I have no way to tell. Even if I did attach this to a voltmeter, I think it would explode. So I'll just take their word for it and take mine. This thing definitely can get the job done. It's got a freaking meat tenderizer on the front. It's actually not spiked. It's kind of like um, a flat spike in itself, but I think it adds a little bit more weight and it's definitely much more intimidating looking. And at the front you have this triple stun probe and the flashlight. This has a little computer built into it, so you slide this up and down and it will sort of go through the cycle. Low intensity flashlight, then your strobe, and your high intensity flashlight. So it's pretty cool, definitely useful, and if you're wondering about the overall length, this original is 19 inches, and with the modification it comes to 23 inches, so Definitely having the modifications. You have more striking area. You have a little bit extra reach. I mean, these things are just <laughs> overkill, and I just went into like ridiculous danger mode with this one, but I'm okay with that. So here I'm going to show you how to modify your existing stun baton. First, you're going to need to get a, an X-Acto knife and a small screwdriver, because at the top here, there is some tape and you're gonna to want to remove that. Now I've already done so and you can see where it was based off of the leftover adhesive that was used to cover that up. It's kind of like a black electrical tape with some writing on it. It says like how much voltage there is, but you don't really need that. And if you wanna go back and cover that up, you could always just use electrical tape or what I like to do is buy this carbon fiber vinyl and it makes it look really, really sophisticated and upgraded even though it's just some cheap plastic material, but I'm not gonna pay for carbon fiber for a, a prototype. It just doesn't make sense. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you the internals. Now you can see that this screw is very, very small. So what I like to do is buy these small bags just to carry them in and store them just so I don't lose them. I'm sure you have a better method, but this is what's worked for me. And the nice thing is that I can just label this bag and it says what project it's from and how many parts there were so that I can keep track of it very easily. Now you can see it's very simple, it just comes right out. 
and the red wires are your stun gun leads that go up to the top of the flashlight and then you have this little plastic cup and very easily this is your lamp. Now the lamp can just be saved for another project if you'd like but you're not going to use it if you're upgrading your stun gun. There probably was a way for me to add that portion at the top here. There's enough room but I didn't really want to weaken the structure of this. I mean, I could have sat right on top of there and maybe I'll come back in another project and do that. But I really didn't care to have a flashlight in this modification because I was going for more of a superhero look. Now you have your two leads and we're gonna go on to the next step where I show you how to prepare the 3D printed portion. There's different websites where you can actually buy the piece already 3D printed, they'll ship it to you but definitely buy a 3D printer. I don't know what you're waiting for. If that's holding you back, then all of my projects from here out are probably gonna be out of your reach. And it's the tool of the future. You can build anything. I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description for all these parts and also a recommendation for a 3D printer that I think would be good starting off. Now I'll show you how to modify your 3D printed portion. You're gonna need some threaded rod and also wire. This is about what you're looking for and also some wire strippers and some pliers. Now this is pretty simple. You have this piece of 5 16 inch threaded rod. Thread it down to right about here. Then take your wire and strip both ends. And on the other end you want to leave about half an inch. Then you're gonna make sure that you twist this because it's going to be sort of like threading a needle at the bottom here. So find the hole that matches up and you have that go through. Then if you wanna use, you can probably use your finger just to bend this. Now see here how this is going to work. You're gonna slide this down, okay? And it's gonna get a little bit of tension because right at the bend of the wire, that's when you take your rod and you twist this down. Now it's gonna get a little bit challenging at some points to do with your fingers. That's why I have the pliers here. And you pretty much understand how this is gonna work now. This is gonna act as a locking mechanism to sort of pinch the wire in between and you don't have to use any solder or glue or anything. It's just gonna be kind of a mechanical, just friction fit. But I think it works really well and if you ever need to go back and change something, you don't have any problems. And there we go. And you can see this is not coming out. Now complete the last step six times until you have something like this. The arc is going to want to travel wherever it can, whichever distance is shortest. So you're going to have to insulate this really well and be very diligent with that. That's why I have heat shrink tubing, liquid electrical tape, and regular electrical tape. And whatever way you can do it is the right way, honestly. So I start off by putting heat shrink tubing in all these. The black portion that I have marked off is just where I would have already removed the insulation wire, but that needs to be exposed because you're gonna have to solder this to the actual module that pumps out the charge. You can just separate these two, treat it like the prongs of something like this, the charging unit. You do not want these to touch, otherwise it's gonna short circuit and it's not gonna work very well. And if it was an actual electrical socket, it might blow a fuse. So you can tell why that needs to happen. I would definitely recommend this. It makes your life a lot easier. At the bottom of this module, there's a little bit of this plastic. I would use an X-Acto knife and very, very carefully trim around that because you want as much space as possible. Once you put everything in here, there is almost no room for error. That doesn't mean that it's super complicated. You just have to take your time. I would say that removing that helps because there's another portion right here that this is pushed up against. And if you remove this, that gives you a little bit more breathing room and allows you to put the parts in much easier. So remove that portion of plastic and then it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. You want to solder these two together so that you have the arcing of the electricity from the stun gun portion going into these, I guess you could call them probes. Once you have this correctly wired up, give it a quick test and see that the arcing is going across. That's pretty good. 
Now, there is a possibility that it's going to arc inside, which is why I said you have to be very diligent whenever you're grounding each wire so that it can't just arc across. You want something that's obstructing it, like an insulator. You'll notice that I put this hole here. I actually retracted that in the final design because I felt that putting my soldering iron, you just use the tip of the soldering iron to melt a hole really quickly, and then you would install your super tiny, easy to lose, and frustrating screw, and that's going to anchor it in place. Now I'll show you how to disassemble the handle so that you can expose the electronics and change that LED to whatever color you like. You're gonna need a soldering iron as well as this tool which is used for removing the retaining ring. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is unscrew the handle. Then you're gonna have this retaining ring that's gonna be inserted right in this little groove right here. It's kind of hard to see, but right here is where the retaining ring is going to be. And that's going to be holding this piece of plastic in as well as the housing for all the electronics. Now this can be disassembled just with a small Phillips head screwdriver. And then that's where all of the electronics is obviously in the switch. Up close, you can see the red LED right there. Now it's connected to a resistor and then also to the switch right here and then that wire goes back to this switch so as long as everything is maintained it doesn't matter if you remove that so I would start by desoldering right here and then you can just this is actually just kind of free floating in there and it's anchored by this so once this is removed you can get a little bit easier access and pull the LED out which you can see is already kind of just friction fit into this hole right here. Then you just change them out and keep in mind the polarity of the LED. I would definitely take a picture of the electronics before you start messing around because if something comes undone, you're gonna have a really tough time knowing where everything was originally connected. That's just a tip that I've had over the years so that you don't make any mistakes. Now, if you want to touch up your stun baton at this point, feel free to do so. I'm using this carbon fiber vinyl. Obviously, I can't afford custom carbon fiber parts, so I'm just going to fake it till I make it and I've used some black electrical tape to cover up the logo because that looked really dumb and also added to the handle to insulate it and then went back on all the surfaces where the screws were. And I would definitely recommend like a large ruler with like a T at the end so that you can make everything nice and squared off and it's really simple to do so I, a cutting mat would also help and it looks pretty cool in my opinion even that little design kind of adds a little bit of artistic flair and there's the handle I think I did a pretty nice job what do you guys think I'm definitely upgrading the aesthetics of this type of stuff but I still think that there's a little bit of improvements that can be made. Um, I would like to maybe go back and add the flashlight. I don't really know, is that necessary? It's cool, but I think if I was gonna be a superhero, I'd probably have like LEDs built into my mask or like a headlamp type of thing. I don't know if having a flashlight is really beneficial, but to the average person, I would say, yeah, it's nice to be able to see in the dark. I just honestly think that this is kind of overkill for a self-defense gadget. But I thought I'd share it with you because you seem to like this type of stuff and I like building it. So it's a win-win situation for the both of us. Please leave a comment and share this video with your friends if you think that they would like it. I think that this is something unique and if you help me spread the word of my channel, that's going to help a lot in the long run. Also, check out my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go ahead and like and follow those. That helps me a lot because it shows that I have people who care and are willing to sort of invest their time into what I'm doing and that really makes me feel good to know that people are responding to the type of stuff that I'm doing. Think of this as my apocalypse right here. Got a really awesome shield and also stun baton. This can be closed and then right here the striking surface. I may upgrade this to have a stun portion of itself for kind of a like a hammer strike, it's very natural if you want to hit something like that and to push them away and if they really don't want to leave you alone, you can press the button and go into 
battle mode. I decided to name myself Gear, G3AR, just because Greek Gadget Guru is a mouthful and gear pretty much describes what I'm doing. I'm creating badass gear and it still has G3 Greek Gadget Guru in it so I think it's perfect. I actually had my audience and followers on Instagram help me decide. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you're definitely missing out because I'll ask you guys different questions on what you think I should do in moving my content forward. Also on Twitter, I post different ideas that I have, things that just come to mind randomly, and I get your feedback on that. It's just fun to talk. Like, I'm a normal person. Who would have thought of that? There's a spider on here. There's a spider. Oh, there's a spider. Spider bat. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. There's a lot of extra content that you guys are missing out on. And the more following I have, the more marketable I become to sponsors. So that's going to help me build bigger and better projects. So as always, take it easy, and thanks for watching.